On November 11th, 2011, humanity was blessed with the initial release of Skyrim on the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Six years later, it would be released again on the Nintendo Switch. That's right, for the first time, there's an officially endorsed way to play Skyrim on the go, which, depending on how you look at it, could be a curse or it could be a blessing. Although my favorite bit of trivia about Nintendo Switch Skyrim is how it released at $60 retail, you know, the original retail price of Skyrim from 2011 after it had been given a $20 re-release with all the fucking DLC and it had been given a reduced price remaster. 75 hours? That's not enough. We gotta get those numbers up. Alright, so here we are in the menu of Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch. It, it's just like any other version of Skyrim. It's even got the anniversary edition upgrade. Even Nintendo had to get in on the action of the 30th release of Skyrim. <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna be starting out with a new character. And just so you know that we are playing on the Nintendo Switch, look, it's the Joy-Con warning screen. If I got a nickel for every time I sat through this intro right here, I would quite literally be a millionaire. When I was a child, I used to keep on replaying the intro to Skyrim just because I loved it so much. It was unironically my favorite part of the game, and I don't understand why. I played it so much as a child that now... As an adult, I think that I have extra hatred towards the intro. I mean, I guess that's basically how it goes, though, right? When you're a kid, your attention span is really low, so you keep on starting new characters. You can't commit to one. You get to level 10 on one, and they're like, okay, I'm tired of being an orc. I want to be an Argonian now. And then after 10 levels on the Argonian, you're like, okay, I want to go be a Khajiit. This is all just a roundabout way of me saying that I hate Skyrim's intro. It's too long and drawn out. I thought I was supposed to be roleplaying as an infinitely powerful being, but instead I'm roleplaying as a paraplegic. Oh god, Skyrim, though the Switch's graphics are not good. Why does he look so anguished? I don't understand. What is wrong with him? Bro literally has the thousand yard stare. That's probably the most iconic part of the whole video game. So, a while back, I made a Fable 2 video, and in that video, I said that I thought that people that picked female characters who are actually male in real life were weird. Well, today, I joined the ranks because I am making a female Nord for this Skyrim video. Reason being, well, uh, I, I just, I, I want to change it up, man, but oh my god, she is fugly. All right, I think this is my character. That'll do. So to circle back around to how long this intro takes, I've been recording for 12 minutes and I've pressed maybe seven buttons. It almost looks like this guy is in a gimp suit. Also, I've never really understood how he didn't fucking notice that there was a giant ass dragon behind him. Like he didn't hear it flying over the mountain. I would assume that a winged lizard the size of a freight train would not be that silent cruising through the sky. Anyways, we're on to better things and I'm going to do the speedrunner thing and I'm going to run completely through this because all this shit is dumb and bullshit. So we're just gonna run through everything. And I always thought this part was cool when the dragon literally burns the dead body. So when you play this for the first time, it's a pretty intense thing, I'm not gonna lie, because you're like, holy shit, what if the dragon gets me? Now that I've played this game for going on 12 years, I now realize that, hey, I don't think the dragon can actually get me. I said going on 11 years, but it's actually going on 13 years of Skyrim. Oh my god, I'm getting old. That epiphany is actually insane to me. I've been playing this game since I was, what, six years old. I started playing Skyrim when I was six years old. That was 13 years ago. I am now almost a 19-year-old adult still playing this game. That is, oh my god. God, Skyrim is a good game. So basically, what I want to do for this character, you know, usually you backslide and you become a, a stealth archer, but we're not allowing that to happen. My character right here, Sophia the Nord, is going to be a light armor donning one hand shield user. Very similar to my playstyle from when I was younger. I mean, I just used one handed stuff when I was younger because. I just wanted to hit things with swords. But as I got older, I realized that the best option was Stealth Archer. But as I've gotten more older, uh, I have realized that, you know what? Even though Stealth Archer is an easy way to complete the game, like, fast, it's not very fun to just be a Stealth Archer. You just kind of avoid 
all gameplay as a stealth archer. So I want to go through this while using a sword and shield because I feel like that is more engaging to my brain and it's a combatant against the ever prevalent TikTok brain rot, which I think I am becoming more and more affected by as the days go on. I find myself trailing off in thought whilst in class now and it's like, hey, Maybe you should not be thinking about not the lecture. Like, maybe dial in here and really learn about interpersonal communications, Joseph. I really don't want to wear the Imperial armor because I'm a Nord, and I would like to keep that sanctity of being a purebred Nord, but the Imperial armor is just better for what I want to do. Skyrim releasing in 2011 is kind of insane, right? Because when Skyrim released in 2011, there was almost no way to play Skyrim on the go unless you had one of those really expensive portable gaming laptops, which at the time weren't even that readily available. And I don't even know if they were available at the time. The things I'm referring to are those uh, GPD wins. They're basically tiny gaming laptops the size of like a 3DS, but also like $900 in 2011. That is fucking insane. Like, no one's going to be able to pay that, right? So to think that only seven years removed from the initial release of Skyrim on the Xbox 360, the PS3, that we would not only get that game on a portable handheld, but we would get an upgraded version on a portable handheld. And out of all the portable handhelds it was, the Nintendo Switch, the generation that Nintendo is most widely known for is the Nintendo Wii. And that was the year that they were the least powerful specs-wise. So to think that two console generations later for Nintendo, that they would be running Skyrim on a handheld is just insane to me. I always like pointing this out anytime that I'm in this situation. Take this torturer's hood, even if you, you're not going to wear it, just take it and store it because it's a unique item added in the special edition of Skyrim. Yeah, that's right. In the original 2011 release of Skyrim, you actually could not get the Torturer's Hood. Even though it's not really that important of an item, it's just a renamed Unenchanted Thieves Guild Hood, it's still cool because it, you know, it wasn't in the original game. It was added in the special edition. I still do need a shield though. I mean, here's an iron shield. It's not what I want specifically because what I would like is uh, like a hide shield or something. A shield that isn't heavy armor, but it's fine. I'll take it for now. My friend Mason actually really loves Skyrim. And the reason he loves Skyrim is because of me. You know, he didn't know what Skyrim was until I showed it to him. You know, I'm a goaded friend. But I remember when he bought it on the Switch. I didn't actually have it on the Switch when he got it. And I watched him play it for so long. And I was like, oh my God, Skyrim on portable sounds so awesome. And he confirmed that, yes, Skyrim on the Switch was indeed very awesome. Now, I said that I was not going to do Stealth Archer stuff. However, comma, I have a level 50 character on my Nintendo Switch. And I have come to realize that I need to be able to fight long-ranged opponents. And not necessarily archers, because archers are pretty easy to deal with. It's the fucking mages in Skyrim that are insane, right? Once you get up there to level, like, 38 and beyond, the bandit marauder mages are insanely overpowered, and they can actually kill you after six seconds of just looking in your direction if you're playing on a high enough skill. So, I decided, hey, I'm gonna specialize an archery for this as well not specialize in archery but kind of you know double as a combat archer to help make dealing with mages easier somebody is going to comment about me using the iron sword as opposed to literally everything else that is in my inventory and you know what i say to that bah humbug the iron sword is one of the coolest looking swords in Skyrim. It's just a normal looking sword. Like, I don't know what it is about swords in Skyrim, but they all look stupid. Or at least most of them look stupid. Most of them don't look like real swords. If I'm in a fantasy RPG setting, I want a sword that looks like a sword. The Imperial sword looks like some type of decorative version of the iron sword. But I will not be using the iron sword for this entire video. I do have plans to go and grab some very special 
unique items to Skyrim for the Switch. Exclusive DLC to the Nintendo Switch Skyrim version, if you will. Maybe I'm just weird because I'm thinking about it now, and when it comes to bows in Skyrim, I really like just the ordinary longbow as well. I think that for a bow, it like it just being a piece of wood is pretty cool. Who wants to see me kill some spiders in third person? I know I would like to. When I was younger, the only way I would play Skyrim actually is in third person, which I don't know how I did that back then. Because combat in third person is not the easiest thing. Um, it's also not the prettiest to look at. It actually got to a point where I just stopped using the third person mode altogether because I didn't like it. But as I've gotten older, I have found that using the third person camera perspective and the first person camera perspective in tandem works the best you know when you're just walking around skyrim doing your business using third person isn't bad because you can get to actually see what your character looks like in this game with so much customizability but when you're in the combat sections you got a first person it's a pretty good system that i've devised for skyrim and actually it makes it even easier because my nintendo switch controller has back pedals and one of my back pedals is assigned to clicking in on the stick which is toggle perspective yeah if you want to be a real skyrim gamer you need to get back paddle switch controller oh survival mode what does survival mode actually do survival adds the need to eat sleep and stay warm it also adds additional challenges such as no fast travel reduced carry weight and leveling up only when you sleep see the survival mode entry to help for details sure why not i'll enable the survival mode and as soon as I enabled it, I literally became over encumbered. What happened? Why did my carry weight go down by half? Why would that ever be a good idea? I'm turning this off. Turn that off. We do not want that. I'm still over encumbered. Why is my carry weight 150? Is it just forever halved? Can I reload that save, please? I yeah, I guess my carry weight was just forever halved after turning on survival mode. So you know what? I was going to be like, hey, let's turn on survival mode. It'll it'll make the video more interesting. No, we're not turning on survival mode. That's cringe. Anyways, after leaving Helgen, my first thing that I like to do is that there's a bandit camp right down here. I like to go attack these bandits. You know, just to get a little more XP. And sometimes they have some pretty good gear. Well, I mean, relatively good, uh, to, like, for the place you are in the game. Like, this guy has a still great sword. I don't have a steel great sword. The main thing that I usually come here for is this iron armor, but as it stands right now, I don't need the iron armor because I'm not specializing in it. What I will be grateful to take though is the gold and this steel sword. Now I don't like the steel sword as much as I do the iron sword, but one point extra of damage don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on that. That's a lot. Ooh, a treasure map. I don't actually... I've never done the treasure map stuff in Skyrim. I've always thought it too complicated for my minuscule brain. What's weird is both Rayloff and the Imperial, after you leave Helgen, say that it would be best if you split ways. But both of them just lead you to Riverwood and show you every land marker to there. So it's like... You didn't actually want me to leave. You, you could have just told me to stay if it would have made you feel better. But speaking of landmarkers, we're at the Guardian Stone. So we're going to go with the Warrior Stone because I'm a warrior character. I would actually like to showcase something real fast when it comes to archery in the Skyrim Nintendo Switch version. As everybody knows, Nintendo Switch has gyro and that extends to Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch. Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch has gyro! I think that gyro should be adopted by more games and consoles. Like, the PS5 has gyro, but I can't think of a single game that I played on my PS5 back when I had one that used gyro. I don't even think that Skyrim PS5 edition has gyro support. Which it should, because gyro you know, contrary to popular belief, is actually very useful for gaming, especially in a first person's perspective. Let me explain it in terms like this, right? So on a controller, the sticks are good for broad movement, not really precise movement. So the idea is that you use the stick for big adjustments and then for tiny like adjustments, you use the gyro. So if I needed to hit like 
an enemy that was over there, what I would do is I would sling the stick over there and then re-aim with the gyro. I don't know why I just mansplained gyro to you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was not in my intention to mansplain gyro controls to you. It's okay. My girlfriend will watch this video and she'll appreciate it. That's all that matters. By the way, Sophia, I named my character after you. So you're about halfway through the video now and you just got done listening to me ramble about gyro aim. I think you're probably enjoying the video. So maybe you should consider becoming a channel member. Tiers start at 99 cents and you basically gain access to everything starting at the first tier. Now the benefits of becoming a channel member are pretty lackluster, I will admit. However, it's not really supposed to be a benefit system. It's more of a donation system for me. So if you're financially stable and willing to, consider becoming a channel member. Alrighty, we're here in Riverwood, so we're going to do the Riverwood things. Firstly, that's talking to Alvor because I want to sell them all the shit that I got from Helgen. All right, so I have 491 gold. Yes, he has a hide shield. That's all I needed. I mean, at this point, I can just leave, but I'm going to buy everything that he has that I would like. So I did buy some new equipment, and I also upgraded the equipment. As you can see, my steel sword is now fine, and my shield is fine, and my... Uh, Curious is fine. Actually, I have extra pieces now that I can sell to Alvor, except no, I can't because he's no longer at his forge. That means I can't sell anything to him. So if you've played any amount of Skyrim, you've probably heard of plate clipping or book clipping. Any type of clipping that revolves around putting something on a wall and running through it. There is a hidden passageway behind this that you unlock pretty early on into the main quest, but you can unlock it earlier if you just plate clip through it with this kettle. there we go i did it i did it and eventually yeah look delphine will just open the wardrobe so now you have access to everything that's down here and we can sell it pretty early on for some extra cash like this orcus greatsword will be good i'm going to actually just straight up take this blade sword i'm going to be using the blade sword until I get the Master Sword now, I guess. I just keep on getting upgrades. There is one more thing that I want to do in Riverwood before I go on my hike to the throat of the world, and that is befriend Findel, because I need a follower before I go up there. All right, so I need to go deliver this forged letter to a woman, one Camellia Valeris, who is actually a potential spouse in Skyrim, so I don't know how interacting with Findel and befriending him actually uh, affects your ability to marry Camilla Valerius. All right, so now, hello, Findel. We can talk to you. Follow me. I need your help. Now I have a personal guardian who literally is just a regular hunter and woodcutter. Wow, we're going to be so protected by Findel. No, but the main reason that I wanted him is you can actually get some easy levels early in the game with him. So basically what you do is you buy his archery training after befriending him. And then after you buy it, you go into his inventory and take the gold that you just paid him with. And there, I got my archery to 20 by doing nothing but befriending Findel. I'll save that level up actually until we get to the ice troll on the summit that ice troll how am i going to kill that ice troll actually skyrim on the nintendo switch is a blessing and a curse if you think about it right because skyrim on the go on one hand is phenomenal right you have this giant ass game that is almost endless in quests right but on the other hand you have this giant ass game with almost endless amounts of quests on the go, right? So it's pretty easy to just get sucked into Skyrim. You know, before the only thing keeping you from playing Skyrim 24-7 was the lack of you being at the house. Now the only thing that's keeping you from playing Skyrim 24-7 is the amount of charge your Switch has, which you can just carry around a charger and have no problem. Although one problem may arise while playing Skyrim on the go, and that's Joy-Con drift. A sad reality of being a Nintendo Switch user actually is uh 
Joy-Cons just don't last long, and they're super fucking expensive. There's really no excuse for it. Uh, usually, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to free this guy this time as well. Yes, and free items. I don't have anything to give you, so you're actually probably most likely going to die. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I could have... You could have, like, actually lived had I not come around. It doesn't really matter, though. These guys fucking suck. I'm used to playing... <laughs> I'm used to playing on my characters, like, level 50. The enemies usually are not pushovers. These guys... Are definitely pushovers. <sighs> at least he, <laughs> at least he died for what he believed in. I guess this gives me a good time to actually talk about the weird Nintendo Switch graphics. Look at the amount of pop in on the Nintendo Switch. Like the draw distance is literally zero. One weird graphical thing with Nintendo Switch Skyrim is when things aren't loaded in or they are loading in in front of you, it kind of like materializes it's kind of hard to explain it's like it loads in in cubes and it's something that's only present on the nintendo switch version and I, I would assume that it has something to do with the nintendo switch being super underpowered for the game it's honestly astonishing that skyrim can run on the switch i mean it doesn't run perfectly nowhere near it actually uh, there's fucking incessant crashes on the game. Oh, look at that. Fendel is all ready for battle now. He's an actual warrior. Although he wasn't a warrior before. He was just like a hunter. Ooh, look at this. This is exactly what I was talking about. The necromancers uh, that you have to kill, but except usually... Well, fuck. Fendel killed him for me. Holy shit, you're far away. You know what? Maybe I don't need to worry about using my bow and arrow Findel has got my back that's probably for the best though because low level archery is probably one of the most not fun things in the game that's what i mean look at the way the terrain just loaded in it loaded in in like cubes i genuinely don't know another way to explain it other than it loads in in cubes i thought i was insane explaining that but now that i've seen it again no it loads it in cubes. That, that makes sense. That's what that is. I'm going to take a chance on running up this mountain. Ooh, there's a troll right there. Not the troll that I should be fighting, but it is a troll, so I'm going to fight it. Just as a proof of concept, to see that if I can actually do this, I'm kind of scared and thinking that I'm... Oh, you know, I didn't even think of that. Uh, trolls have regenerating health in Skyrim. That isn't very <laughs> good for my cause. Ooh, but if I use a combination of sword swings and parries, I should be able to do this. You know what? This is a lot easier than I thought it was. I overreacted. That was easy. Although I think that frost trolls are more aggressive and more powerful than normal trolls. The only reason to play Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch is for the portable factor or if the only console you have is a Nintendo Switch. Now for me, I have it on the Xbox 360, I have it on Steam, I have it on PS3, I obviously have it on the Nintendo Switch. So there's really no reason for me to play the Skyrim Nintendo Switch Edition other than I just like playing the Nintendo Switch version, I don't know. That does not matter, however, because I've arrived at my destination. Iverstead, I believe, should be just over here. I think that that's what that little town symbol is. I think I'm right. I think I got to Iverstead. I did get to Iverstead. Why is it so foggy? So I need to get up the 7,000 steps. And then after that, I need to conquer the mountain by climbing it. So there is a pathway that leads to the throat of the world. However, I'm level one and I don't have the shout that opens that pathway up. So I have to just climb the side of a mountain like a true Skyrim player. Also, I don't know if that comes through on the recording, but there was just like a really weird audio cut out there. It was like a... That's, that's, a, that's an exclusive glitch to the Nintendo Switch version. Although, Editor Joseph, if you cannot hear that audio distortion while editing the video, don't keep this bit in. Just, just don't do that. But if it was in the video, keep this part where I'm being meta and talking about it. Keep that in. Or keep none of it in. 
even though the audio distortion is there because it's not really worth being talked about. Okay, we're almost to the Frost Troll, so we'll wait one hour until Findel catches up. Then we'll switch to our longbow, and we'll try and get some sneaky, cheeky bow shots off while we're at a distance. Although, I don't think it's going to do much damage to him. All right, so let's try and get some sneak attacks off. There, I got at least one sneak attack off. That's all that really matters, I guess. Okay, so the troll approaches. Oh my fucking god. The troll approaches and almost one-shots me. Holy <laughs> fucking mackerel. Okay, shield bash. Uh, take the level up now. This is where it becomes insane, right? Because I take, I put it, I put it all into stamina, right? And then fuck. Okay. Uh, back up. Shield bash. Stagger. Hard hit. Uh, bam. Killed the ice troll. Level three now. Man, a sword and shield combo in Skyrim is actually pretty goaded. Me, when I've avoided gameplay for almost 10 years of my life, and I finally realized that when you engage in the mechanics of the video game, it might be fun. For those that don't know how to climb mountains in Skyrim, I'll give you a step by step tutorial. Uh, step one, look at a mountain. Step two, climb the mountain. Step three is optional. You can get a horse. Horses are like Sir Isaac Newton's worst enemy. They defy all laws of gravity. They just walk adjacent to the walls. Also, I'm not going to be able to climb the mountain from this position. I like to imagine mountain climbing in Skyrim is a lot like real life rock climbing. You gotta look where you're going and you gotta make choices before you enact your choices, right? right so I'm looking, it's like, eh, to get up this mountain, I probably need to somehow get up on that ridge. And to get up on that ridge, I need to scaddle all the way over here and walk around and then climb this snow. And oh, look at that. I won't be able to get up there. That's just too high. Mm. I sauntered on over here for no reason. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm there. I'm so, I'm so there. It's curtains for the threat of the world. You thought you could keep your secrets away from me. Think again. I'm here, baby. Only look at that. Look at that look i'm just looking over skyrim surprised my nintendo switch isn't blowing up look at all that half loaded terrain oh that's nice that's nice oh i'm so close i'm so close that's that's the barrier right there that keeps you from entering the throat of the world did i make it i did i made it to the throat of the world let's go i'm actually goaded now i can take you to the exclusive DLC for Skyrim Nintendo Switch Edition right around here in this alcove there'll be a chest and inside that chest you'll find some pretty nifty items. Those nifty items being the Master Sword, the Hylian Shield, and the Champion's Tunic. Now look at my awesome character. She is Zelda from The Legend of Link. It is honestly so surreal seeing Hylian insignia just on things in a game where you kill people. Like look at this. I shouldn't just have the Master Sword in Skyrim. <laughs> just like I shouldn't have the Hylian Shield. This is literally the Hero of Time's sword and shield. The thing that he used to banish Ganon to a different freaking realm I have in Skyrim. That means, canonically, at some point, Link came to the continent of Skyrim and left not only his sword and shield but his Breath of the Wild tunic. If you ended up liking this video, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below if you've ever played Skyrim on the Switch, and if so, tell me how you liked it. Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.